welcome back to my channel and if you're new what up so you guys this is going to be a really fun kind of laid back chill type of video this is going to be my yearly makeup empties and i love doing this video so so much i really enjoy seeing how much makeup i was able to use up in the entirety of the year because just like my body care collection my makeup collection is massive i have so many different things i love so many different products but i like to keep my collection kind of somewhat regulated like things need to be going out just as much as I'm buying things, I need to be getting rid of things. Um, this year was kind of disappointing. I'm not going to lie. I used around like 56 makeup products this year, whereas last year, I know I used up like 80 something. So definitely fell short this year. And I know I know why, like I know what it's because um, of, but I'm still like really happy with the things that I was able to get out. 2024 hopefully will hopefully will be a better year for makeup empties i've already like planned out what it is that i want to get rid of so let me know down in the comments below if you guys want to see a plan to pan i'm not really a project panner anymore i don't make like project pan content but i still work on or work towards getting things out of my collection um so let me know if you guys want to see an actual plan to pan video where i go over all of the things that i want to use up for the year i will link my previous plan to pan for 2023 up in the cards so you guys can kind of see if i met some of my goals because i definitely didn't meet all of them but you guys can kind of see if i met some of my goals um, I will also link my playlist for my makeup empties so that you guys can check it out. I try and do this every year. I know I did one last year. I think I skipped 2021 and I did one for 2020 and then, you know, years previous. So I will link that so you guys can go and check it out. So everything is going to be grouped together by category and I'm just going to talk about it. So let me see what I want to start with first. Okay, so let's actually start with like setting sprays and then we can move into like um, eyeshadow primers, face primers, mascaras and things like that. So um, I'm going to start with my Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. So this is definitely one of my all time favorite setting sprays. This is a go to. This is a classic. I have repurchased this so many times. It does take me a while to get through because this is a big old four fluid ounce and you don't really need to spray a lot of this. So this is definitely like the end all be all for setting my makeup. I use this at the end of my routine to set everything down and it definitely makes sure that your makeup lasts all day. It says temperature control technology and it's so good. I love the Urban Decay All Nighter. A nice dupe for that is the Elf Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist. This one is really, really nice. The only thing is that it has powders in it. So I feel like it clogs up every bottle that you put it into. I took it from this bottle and I put it in here and then I even transferred it from that bottle to another bottle and all of the nozzles clogged up. So while this is a really good setting spray and it rivals the Urban Decay All Nighter. I will not repurchase that one. And then I had the Morphe Sour Patch Kids Watermelon Slice Continuous Setting Mist. Um, in general, I like the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, but this is not something that I use to actually set my makeup. This is something that I use to like melt my powders together. It's not a necessity, but I do actually have another one sitting over here. So I will use that one up. And then the very last setting spray I have is a super, super tiny mini sample of the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus that I used up and I already have the big size, which this will be a makeup empty for 2024. So yes, I did use that up. So those are all of my setting sprays. Um, now let's talk about my eyeshadow primers really quick because I only have two. So I did manage to finish up the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish shadow primer and this was not brand new when I brought it into, you know, working on it or I'm trying to finish it up. It was like maybe about three quarters of the way done. So I did finally go ahead and finish that one. And then I also finished my Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Eden. This literally took forever. There's so much product in here. And this one has a little slight color tint. So I really don't use a whole, whole lot of this. But I'm happy that I finally got through that. I do have some other eyeshadow primers that I need to work on. So now we can move on to face primers. So I have the One Size Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. I already have a full size of this. I really do like this primer. It's smoothing. It's blurring. It's really, really nice. Um, and then the Smashbox Photo Finish Oil and Shine Control Primer. This one, again, is really nice. They have since changed the packaging. It doesn't look like this anymore. And I don't know if they changed the formula or not, but I just wouldn't repurchase it. I have other primers that are mattifying and smoothing that I like better. The e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, again, this one was nice, but I feel like I have my gripping primers that I like a lot more than this one. Maybe I will try their Niacinamide because I heard that that one is a lot better for oily skin. But as of right now, it's not a repurchase. This is definitely one of my favorites. This is the e.l.f. Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer, and I do have backups of this one already. I have like two more backups, so I wouldn't repurchase this after I am done with those backups because, again, I have 
just found better and what I like for my skin. But this is actually an amazing, amazing primer and I do really, really like it. And so I will be excited to go through those backups when I do. This is the Revlon Prime Plus Mattifying and Pore Reducing Makeup and Skincare Primer. This one is really, really nice. And I was using it because it has salicylic acid and um, artichoke extract and everything. It was just like really, really nice at blurring my skin and then also mattifying my skin. But I just really don't need a skincare primer all in one, especially with the amount of primers that I have, just because I feel like the skincare will go bad in it before I actually get around to using it. So I don't want to have just a lot of those um, running around in my collection. And then I finished off the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer Base, and I absolutely love this primer. This is one that I would definitely repurchase. This reminds me a lot. Okay, so like the way that it makes my skin look and the way that it makes my makeup look. This reminds me a lot of the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Balm Powder. And y'all know, as of right now, that is my all-time favorite primer of life. The Danessa Myricks can do no wrong. And I feel like this Tarte primer gives me a very similar vibe to the Danessa Myricks. The Danessa Myricks is just a little bit better than this one, but I definitely would repurchase this if I were to see it on sale or something like that. And I was just like, you know, in need of a primer, I would definitely pick that one up. It is really, really good. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to foundation and this is where I'm really disappointed because I have so many foundations in my collection. I'm just like, how did I not use up more foundations than this? But I kind of already know why. Like I really dropped the ball. I really was, I was playing with myself. But anyway, this is the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. This is in the shade D15 Warren Tawny. I don't even know if they still make this anymore. But around the time when I was using it, it was actually a really good foundation. It was full coverage. It was matte. It held up on my skin well. It did really, really well in the heat because I was using this foundation around like the spring summertime so this one was actually really really nice for what it was and when I purchased it at the time I was really excited to use it now that it's out of my collection it's not something that I would repurchase I have other foundations from the drugstore that are so much better that I like a lot more like this one that I'm about to mention right now this is the Morphe Filter Effect Soft Focus Foundation I have been wearing this foundation since it came out I had two shades of it two bottles of it. This is just so good. I'm in the shade Filter Rich 28. I absolutely love this foundation, how it looks. Every time I wear it on camera, it just looks so good. It makes my skin look so smooth, literally like a filter effect. I absolutely love that foundation, but it is gone. And then the very last foundation is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh um, Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. I bought this because of the hype and because I love ColourPop as a brand. Um, but this isn't really a product for me necessarily. Like, I don't know. Um, it didn't hold up well on my skin. I love a good tinted moisturizer, CC cream, BB cream, if it can hold up on my skin. And this one didn't do as well as I wanted it to. So yeah, I would not repurchase this, but I am glad that it's gone. So now we can move on to my concealers. Yes, let's do concealer. So I do have the Morphe Filter Effect Soft Radiance Concealer. This one is in the shade Rich 26 Cool. I am actually working on another one of these to get it out of my collection. I love this concealer. It is so good. I would definitely repurchase it. I just love like how this concealer looks on my skin. I love how it feels on my skin. I love how it holds up. It creases minimally and that's always like what I go for. I want my under eyes to look super, super smooth. And typically if you start creasing or the concealer starts caking in your fine lines, it's not gonna be as smooth as you want it to look, but with this concealer, it looks so good under the eyes. And then I finished off two of these Dosa Colors Meet Your Hue concealers. These are pretty old. I got these when Dosa Colors first launched their foundation and concealer. So it was time for me to get these out of my collection. As you guys can see, they started oxidizing, but these were actually really good concealers as well. A really, really nice full coverage under the eyes, but not heavy. Like they didn't feel heavy under the eyes. It was a nice uh, skin-like finish, really, really good, but wouldn't repurchase those. And then another concealer that I know I wouldn't repurchase, I don't get the hype for this concealer. This is a NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I have mine in the shade Medium Dark to caramel and I just don't get the hype for this concealer. I even took the stopper out and got all the way up in there and I just don't, I don't get the hype for this concealer. I would not repurchase that one. So I guess I will segue on into my powder. So I did finish off two loose powders this year. So I finished off the ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder in the shade Banana. So that is completely gone. I love a good banana powder. I've been using banana powder since baking first became a thing and it just has always worked for me. I'm literally wearing a banana powder right now and I love it. And then I also finished off the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. And this is actually my second little container of this powder that I 
finished. The first one was in Translucent Honey. And then I just finished off this one this year. So I love the Laura Mercier powders. I have her full size powders. I have the Ultra Blur one. And then I have the original. Her powders can do no wrong. They are just so good and so worth the money. So glad that I used those up. So let's do my brow products really quick. I didn't go through that many brow products. And I probably from now on won't go through many brow products products because the way that I do my brows now is very, very simple. I have a very, very simple routine that doesn't require a whole lot of products. So I just finished off this Maybelline um, Total Temptation Brow Definer. This was in the shade Deep Brown. I wouldn't repurchase this because again, the way that I do my brows now, I do not require a pencil or anything like that. So I literally just use this up to get it out of my collection. And then I finished off the MAC Eyebrows Big Boost Fiber Gel. And this one was in the shade Stud. And this is like my current favorite eyebrow product right now. As you guys can see, like I scraped this product. There is like scrapage all up and through here because this is the main product that I use in my eyebrows to get them to look exactly how I want them to look. Oh, I dropped it. I'm currently using another one right now. So, and this product lasts me a good little while. Like I don't have to repurchase this product over and over. So yeah, I did finish off this one and I'm currently working on another one. And then I did also completely finish off my NYX The Brow Glue. Like this thing is empty and I actually need to repurchase this right now because I'm currently using the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter and I hate this. This shit is trash. I hate it so bad. I really need to go back to my NYX brow glue because the way that I like to wear my brows, I like to have them like spiked upward. And the only way for me to achieve that is with a product that's literally like glue like this. So I would definitely need to repurchase that. It is so, so good. Um, and I guess we can go into like my eyeliners. So I did pretty good with eyeliners. So I did finish off the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Eyeliner and I use this eyeliner every single time that I did a wing. I use this eyeliner even if I went over it with powder shadow. I use um, this eyeliner so I was able to finish this off really, really quickly and then I broke my packaging. So I was like, yeah, it's really, really time for that to go now. I also finished off two Pixie by Petra liners. I don't remember the exact names because I can't read it anymore, but one was in black, one was in brown. I always go through a black and a brown liner pretty much every year. And then I finished off one of my favorite black eyeliners. This is the Urban Decay Perversion Eyeliner. I haven't actually purchased one of these in so long because I used to get them as samples all the time. So I'm like slowly going through them. Okay, and now we can get into my cheek products. I only use up two. So I did finally finish my Huda Beauty Tan Tour in the shade Medium. And I am so sad because they are discontinuing this product. I don't know what they're gonna replace it with, but they are taking this bad boy off of the Sephora site. And while I am sad, I don't need this product because I have so many like cream bronzer products that I need to work through and get through because cream products do go bad. So yeah, I'm happy that I actually finished this up. Like I worked really, really hard on this uh, back in 2022. And then all this year, I worked really, really hard to get that finished. So I'm good with that. And then I have one blush here and it's not 100% complete, but that is okay because the packaging broke. It is like shattering everywhere. It's like shattering right now, but I am ready to call this one quits. This is my NYX Blush and Pinch. This is so old, but this was one of the prettiest blushes on my skin tone. One of my everyday blushes. If you can think of what NARS Orgasm looks like on lighter skin tones, that's what this blush looked like on my skin. It was just so pretty, the perfect like pinky tone blush, but it wasn't really pinky. It was kind of peachy as well. And then it had like a little tiny golden shimmer. It didn't give too much shine to my cheeks. It was like literally the perfect pinky every day, pinky peachy everyday color. So I absolutely love that blush and I worked on it forever. If y'all can see how deep this pan is, like this is a deep ass pan of blush. And although I didn't finish it completely, I got pretty darn close. And like I said, the packaging broke. There is no little protective layer right here. So I'm calling it. I'm not putting that on my cheeks anymore. That's it, okay? Okay, so now let's do my mascara. So I'm gonna run through these really, really quickly and just tell you whether or not I would repurchase or buy it again because mascara is very specific to me. Benefit Bad Gal Bang, definitely repurchase. One of my favorites, the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara. If this is still around, I would definitely repurchase that. It's similar to the Too Faced Better Than Sex. Really, really good. Essence, You Better Work. I think this was discontinued, but wouldn't repurchase that anyway. Benefit, They're Real. This is always a favorite. I've been using Benefit for literal year since like 2016 whenever it first came out I've been using it covergirl exhibitionist mascara this was actually really really good again it has that same kind of wand oh I can't even open it anymore it has that same kind of wand like the Too Faced better than sex so it was really really nice that thing is dried out okay 
Um, a Morphe Make It Big mascara. Absolutely love this, especially in conjunction with the Make It Big um, mascara primer. This is absolutely amazing. And it's not as like um, hourglass shaped. It's a little bit more straight, but the bristles are kind of the same. Listen, when I tell y'all this mascara is absolutely amazing with this primer, absolute repurchase. I'm trying to go through some of my other mascaras and um, mascara primers before I repurchase that one. But listen, that one is on the list to repurchase, okay? So now we can move into my lip products. And this is always the biggest category. Like I do really, really well with my lip products. So I'm going to do my lip liners. Okay, so I always go through a ton of lip liners every year. So I have here the ColourPop BFF and Makeup Shayla Lip Liner in BFF4. I have a backup of this going right now. And I think I have another backup or maybe that was my last backup. Either way, I went through this lip liner and I love it so much. It's definitely one of my favorite dark browns. She really made that one for the brown skin baddies because I love that one. And then I also went through my Morphe Trendsetter Lip Liner, which yes, hello, I already got a backup of that one because I absolutely love it. Another one of my favorite dark browns. That one is a little bit more neutral tone and not as warm as the ColourPop one. And then I went through, I believe this was a Kylie Cosmetics lip liner. Yes, it was. And I can't remember the shade, but this was a nice like medium tone warm brown for like more of a natural lip line for me. It wasn't like super defining like a dark brown, but it was really, really pretty. Um, And that goes for this Milani Understatement Lip Liner in the shade Shoot. This is more of a like my natural outline so when i use this lip liner it gives me like a soft 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 contour my lips but better lip line so i absolutely love this one i have another one of these that i'm going through right now love that lip liner and then one of my favorite dark browns this is juvia's place Lux liner in cola and she is all the way done all the way twisted up absolutely love this lip liner it was so good to me love a good dark brown because i'm brown skin I only went through one lipstick this year, which is kind of trifling because I'm usually really good at panning lipsticks. I'm really usually really good at going through lipsticks, but the only one I finished was my Anastasia Beverly Hills lipstick in the shade Nude. I am not finna dig in there and get this product out. I'm just not doing it, but I did finish off this lipstick and hopefully in the next year I can finish off three lipsticks because that is one of my goals for next year. Okay, so let's get into some lip treatment products. So I did use up my Laneige Mini Lip Sleeping Mask in Vanilla. I know I used up more of these. I think I used up like three of these, but I threw them out on accident. Um, I went through this Milani Keep It Full Bombshell Lip Plumping Lip Balm. And I usually go through like two of my Too Faced lip injections every year but because I was using this one and y'all can see how big and thick this packaging is it took me a while to actually go through this product because I only use it once before I start my makeup so it's not like I'm getting a lot of use on this product I use it once every single day every time I do my makeup so it took me a while to get through that one but I did also go through a Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme and this one is in Bubblegum Yum and it was a nice pinky color again I use this before the start of my makeup every single time I have some lip oils and some lip balms from Milani. So I went through two of the Milani lip oils. The first one is in Strawberry Melon, a really nice pinky color that everybody um, says is very similar to the Dior 001 pink shade. And then I went through Passion Fruit Coconut, which didn't really have a color, but I loved it the same. This one is the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm in Gummy Bear. It doesn't really smell like gummy bears. It smells more like grape soda, but it was still good. I really liked it. And then I used the Milani Fruit Fetish lip balm in kiwi watermelon so i can usually go through some lip balms and lip products because i'm always having something on my lips okay and so i think my last category of products is my lip glosses so i did go through oops, i did go through a little mini of the lawless forget the filler line plumping smoothing gloss um the mark jacobs electric lights enamored dazzling gloss y'all know mark jacobs beauty isn't even a thing anymore so that lets you know how old that was this is my Juvia's Place Gloss and It's Electric that's finished. This is a mini of the Fenty Gloss Balm in Fussy and that thing is emptied out. This is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Topaz. I'm still using up all of my Maybelline Lifter Glosses because I still really do love and enjoy them. This is the Revlon Super Lustrous Gloss in Sky Pink that is empty. And then finally, my Tarte Tardis Remix Gloss and that one is empty. So, you guys, I think that is it. Those are all of my makeup empties for 2023. 
like I said, kind of disappointed, but also still proud of myself for actually even going through this much, okay? For me to have the collection that I have, for me to even be able to go through this much is definitely nothing to scoff about, okay? This was a huge, major accomplishment, especially because it takes so long to go through makeup. Like if you've ever tried to go through your makeup like intentionally, you see that it takes forever to go through makeup products. So I really do need to be proud of myself. But that is it for this video, you guys. Um, I think I am gonna just go ahead and film my plan to pin and just show y'all what I wanna try and use up for 2024. So yes, like I said, I will have all of my videos linked down below. Um, my plans to pan for 2023 and then all of my makeup empties so you guys can go and binge watch. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. Let me comment down below. Let me know if you enjoyed it. If you're new, thank you so much for watching. You should definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join the Ferguson Beauty Army as well as that bell notification so that you can be notified every single time that I upload a video. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.